Yo, what's up? Uh, doing a little bit something different. Uh, we're going to be talking with Jake Kaufman today and uh, just going to have a conversation about photography and how to get started. Uh, hopefully you find this video to be helpful and I hope to be doing more content like this soon. Thank you. Uh, enjoy watching it. Yeah. Uh, thank you again for getting on the call, Jake. Um, like I said, my name is Jamal Lawson. I'm the owner of The Jam Company, so I, um, it's a media company. I do interviews, um, articles, and photography, mostly, um, I guess, fixated on concerts. Um, so if you wanted to tell us your story, uh, that would be great. Yeah, so again, thanks for having me. Um, I started photography probably a year and a half ago, um, not including like high school classes. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I love music and I love photography and I want to, I want to kind of mix those together. I have friends who are musicians. Um, so yeah, I think just like going off that. Um, and I think just looking at your website with the interviews you have up and the, and kind of even like the writing you do, it kind of mixes all of like the work I did in my major. Um, so yeah. Um, have you, so you haven't done any concert photography yet, right? No, nope, I haven't done any. Okay. Um, do you know any musicians? Well, like local yeah. artists? Um, so yeah, Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Highland Park, Illinois. Okay. So like, yeah, 45 minutes north of Chicago. All right. And then uh, you were, I'm sorry, I just cut you off about the, if you know any local musicians or any artists. Yeah, so I have a friend, uh, his name's Sean McColl. He is, he's more into like grunge and rock. Uh, I photographed him a little bit, but not not anything like legit at a concert. Um, was it like house shows? Uh, he's done like, have, do you, have you ever been to Chicago? Yeah, yeah, I'm from Chicago originally, so. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm in the room. Say it. Oh, the elbow room? Yeah, I've been there before. Yeah, he's done like that and like venues like that. Okay. Um, yeah, so do you know if he has any other like shows coming up? Uh, I do not. I have to, uh, I was going to contact him. I think I'm like going to do Sunday and just kind of contact everyone I want to contact, either him or venue. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like a challenge for me too. I work a nine to five, so it's kind of managing my time after hours. Yeah. Um, is he, um, yeah, so yeah, if you, yeah, just reach out to him, uh, ask him when's his next show. Uh, that would definitely be a great start. Uh, I started in uh, shooting house shows, uh, yeah, small local venues. Um, if you get acquainted with, if you said you're in Highland Park, yeah, so if, if you get acquainted with any local venues in Highland Park, uh, that would be a great start instead of having a, or at least feel like you, there's a, some kind of challenge to getting started in Chicago. Uh, you can always start where you're at and uh, just build from there. Um, it doesn't have to, you don't have to put these, I guess, heavy expectations on yourself to um, feel like you need to start off strong or anything like that a lot of it's going to be messy at the beginning <laughs> so um i definitely suggest yeah just looking at like just doing a google search looking at you know local venues local music venues um in highland park yeah absolutely i think um like logistically and based on like my experience i think starting small is gonna have to be the way to go definitely what um so you have your own camera, right? What kind of camera you have? So I have right now like a Nikon D3000, which is super entry level. Mm -hmm. I'm banking on some Black Friday deals. Um, so hopefully a higher level Nikon. So what's your experience with taking pictures? So I took them in high school a little bit and then for some reason it just like 
didn't cross my mind in college for the first few years. And then I went on a hiking trip uh, my senior year, so when I was 22. And then I kind of just, after that trip, I kind of like got into the editing a little more. And then just when I came home from the trip, I just started taking photos in the city. Uh, I went to Roosevelt, which is in the city. So that was very beneficial to me. Uh, so, so you take you took classes, photography classes? Yeah, I took a couple, uh, media production, and then I kind of just worked on the side with my photo professor. Just He worked on me with like setting up a portfolio and um, specializing, which I definitely need to do more of. I think I kind of just take photos of things that I think look good, but I want to specialize a little more, uh, in this case, music and concerts. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, even if you did kind of like a general, you just generally took f photos, you can just kind of put that in your personal portfolio. And if you want to specialize in something in particular, you can definitely do, still do that too. Um, but are you still kind of keeping up on just photography knowledge and those skills? Yeah, definitely. I would say, I mean, I'm still like, beginner level um in terms of like learning things like shooting manual it's still like I'm, I'm forcing myself to do it now uh just because there's no other way that i'm gonna get better at it um so yeah i'm reading up on like everything i can online um i think that's the only way that i can get better or anyone can get better is gotta keep learning for sure yeah yeah definitely I definitely highly encourage shooting manual all the time. Uh, there might be some situations where you need to shoot uh, auto or aperture priority or, um, you know, focus on shutter. But, um, yeah, I definitely suggest doing that because each venue that you go to, is particularly with concert photography, is going to be different. So you always have to adjust, especially with, and also each act is going to have a different set of lights too. So it's always going to be, manually adjusting your camera and making sure that you have the right exposure for the final shot or at least the final shot for you to have for your post editing yeah absolutely so you i have a question yeah, yeah i was about to ask you if you have lightroom for uh photoshop or no, any other. I, I did at roosevelt um so now that i'm no longer a student i don't have access to it uh i've been using like pixlr have you heard of that one? Yeah, I've heard of it. I haven't used it, though. And then Raw Therapy. So those are like, Raw Therapy is like the free version of Lightroom, and Pixlr is the free version of Photoshop. Um, so they're decent. They, for now, they'll like do the job. Um, definitely, if you're on a budget, like they, they should be fine. Um, but at some point, like Photoshop is going to be Yeah, for sure. Yeah, any... If you you know, if you don't feel like lashing out money, anything free uh, is definitely going to be uh, beneficial. Yeah. Oh, what was your question? I'm sorry, I cut you off. Yeah. So when you're at a show, how does like getting credentials work? And like, wh I've heard of like this term, like you sit in the pit. What is that like? Okay. Um, so getting credential credentials. Uh, typically that term is used as getting a photo pass. Um, whenever you are looking to get a photo pass, you can either contact the venue manager or uh, contact the band directly or any, uh, anyone involved in the band's camp or their team, like you know, uh, their manager or their booking manager, uh, their press team, anybody like that. Uh, so that's, you'll be able to reach out to them directly. Um, getting, being in the pit, um, it can look different in every venue. Sometimes they have it barricaded off where it's separated from the audience. Um, I know some venues that don't have that barricade and you're just basically kind of getting crammed up to the front, making sure that, uh, you know, you're up at the stage and have a decent view, but you still are in the audience, basically. Um, there's also uh, some venues that 
and it actually depends on the artist too um, that allows you to be as close as possible or, or in the pit but there's some venues that put you in the back of the house or right next to the soundboard and that can be very interesting especially if you don't have a long range lens so it can be a pretty shitty situation to be in if you don't have like that kind of that type of equipment uh, especially if you don't have that kind of money to lash out on a long long range lens um, but yeah I, I always suggest shooting in you know smaller venues because you do have more access uh, to that artist or to that band that's playing uh, and you can move around more freely within the space uh, and typically uh, most bands or most uh, venues are cool with that because um, they kind of understand that, you know, as a, a local photographer, they probably, they're probably just not going to have a huge issue with it because, you know, I don't know, they're a little bit more lax than saying going to a house of blues or, um, what's that, uh, what's that one place on Wilson? Uh, Aragon. Aragon. Yeah. So places like that. Uh, so yeah, I, de I definitely suggest you know shooting in local uh, venues to be able to kind of get your uh, foot in the, foot in the door and also getting your your practice in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so one of like my biggest questions starting out is so obviously having like enough photos, enough practice to create a portfolio is important. But after I guess you get past that first level where you you photographed some local bands, you've done some local shows. How do you start to build your business? And then um, I guess, how do you start to like eventually make money from that? Okay. Um, yeah, so once you finish, or not finish, but once you build up enough, um, uh, I guess shows, or at least, you know, uh, enough of a portfolio to be able to get photo passes, um, you can, at that point, um, if an artist or a band likes your work, um, they can, e they're probably going to either reach out to you directly, um, to shoot for a night or maybe go on tour with them, or you can reach out to a band directly asking if, you know, you can, um, you know, you can come and shoot their entire show or shoot their set in, uh, specifically, um, you know, asking for whatever amount that you feel comfortable with. Um, kind of uh, sharing to you know to be able to pay for your services. Um, I, I've shot for a band uh, specifically for their set for a uh, hundred bucks. Uh, it may not sound like much, but you know it's a start somewhere. Um, I'm not saying that I'm making a lot of money. Like every night I go out to a show, every time you see me posting something, I'm not making money off of that show. Um, it's just me basically kind of getting that exposure of having the ability to shoot a big name artist. So I think building that up and keep doing that on a weekly basis is uh, really important to kind of setting the groundwork for being able to get paid for future gigs. Um, some other th gigs so concert photography is probably not the best way to get paid in terms of beginning but um, I do shoot weddings on the side as well um, I don't shoot many of those but when I do uh, I make a little bit of money off of that um, what else I do I've shot actually I currently manage somebody else's um, social media platform or not social media platform but their um, this project that they have, I'm managing their social media and I'm doing videography services and photography services for them. I'm also just creating content in general for them. So I get paid for that. Um, yeah, just finding other ways to kind of integrate uh, or either, you know, get some other gigs for your services is probably going to be the best way to go. Um, I'm still trying to crack the code on <laughs> getting paid as a concert photographer. Uh, there are in-house uh, concert photographers, so like a, a venue 
could have their own photographer and they there's they're called the in-house photographer uh, and they shoot for their shows on a weekly basis or a daily basis more uh, regularly regularly paid um, that's a more regularly paid gig that you can get uh, there's not a lot of those positions out there because I think that's something that's starting to go away now as I'm starting to learn the uh, concert photography industry or just the music industry in gen general. Um, sometimes a, uh, a record label uh, can hire photographers on some uh, either magazine shoots or uh, just in general for band promotion, uh, band promo shots. Um, so yeah, just, there's, there's a variety of ways to get paid from specifically doing concert photography, but um, I do do a lot of gigs outside of that just to make sure that I'm still getting paid for some of the services that I do. Yeah, that makes sense. As like, so I majored in integrated marketing. Um, so it's, it's pretty much like integrating a bunch of different marketing techniques into one campaign. Um, but for me, really, it taught me that there's a lot of different ways you can make money. Even if you only have one job, you can, like through social media and through content, there's so much you can do. Even if it's not paying a ton, it's like you can, you can become like more creative and there's so much creative freedom with, with all of this content now. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and even integrating that into, um, your business, um, I have a background in business administration, so I've taken a few marketing classes, um, and I also I'm a, I taught myself how to do graphic design as well. So a lot of the work that you see, a lot of the graphics you see, I've created that. Um, so if you have a skill in that, um, that can definitely help not only with your branding uh, for yourself, but also you can um, kind of bundle that at, bundle that with your photography service that you offer as well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, uh, I'm slowly getting into graphic design. Um, on my website, I have more like graphic art. I wouldn't call it graphic design. It's more artsy. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably good advice for anybody starting out. If there's like any skill that you are financially able to do, you might as well just do it. Um, yeah. It can never hurt to build up your toolbox for sure for sure so in some of my photography classes we were talking about instagram um it was a little newer at the time i guess it was it was like years then but it's still like a newer thing and i kind of asked about if you're a photographer how much should you be putting on instagram um and then there's kind of like I guess they're like contradicting a little bit because you don't want to put all of your stuff out there because you want to, I guess, leave something for people to like, people to want, uh, or for you to want people to pay for, but at the same time you want to build that exposure. So do you have like any advice on Instagram or what's kind of your take on using Instagram? Um, so, I mean, there's different approaches. Um, you can most definitely have your best work out there to, you know, you can use Instagram as a portfolio. Um, you can have your best work on there. Um, also, there's some photographers that just show a lot of behind the scenes kind of things, um, or at least their work process or, uh, yeah, just yeah, more behind the scenes stuff, content that they put on there is supplemental to um, what they do as an as an artist and as a photographer. Um, I particularly, um, for myself personally, I basically put out all. I don't put out all, all of them. I put out my best shots from from a night of a concert, um, and basically build my uh, Instagram feed through that or that way. Um, I share a lot of stories like sometimes I'll share like just random stuff on my Instagram stories um, I'm starting to use that a lot more um, kind of sharing other shots that I have from the night 
that I didn't post on my Instagram feed. Um, sometimes just asking questions to connect with um, uh, the fans of the Jam Company and just being able to connect them, connect with them in that way. There's different ways that you can use Instagram, and I think you should probably use all of it because it's gonna just help you be well-rounded uh, in terms of. Uh, the reach that you have on uh, different people that that follow you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think exposure is super important, and Instagram, especially for our age and older and younger, um, most people are on it now. So I think that's important to be active on it. Yeah, Pe mainly people are looking for content that is either. Uh, engaging, fun, or uh, educational, or a mix of both. So if you can find ways to do that um, and integrate that in not only just Instagram, but all social media platforms, your website, um, being able to do that, I think that will be really beneficial for you and helping you grow and just making more creative content or more content that's unique to you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this one's kind of more uh, more personal, but how do you manage your time? Um, so when you're not at a show, what are you doing to use your time wisely? Uh, I literally write down everything in my notes in my phone, and I uh, keep a heavy... I, I, I heavily use my calendar. Um, it's a heavy usage of that. <laughs> um, when, so I, I work some weird hours. My, my hours, I work at um, a school full time. I won't have to disclose the name of it, but um, I work there full time and uh, just finding ways to work around that schedule can be challenging sometimes, but I most definitely make sure that uh, I take the time to write out what shows I want to attend um, in my calendar. I'm starting to do a lot less now because uh, one, I was finding myself getting burnt out and two, I wasn't taking care of myself personally like for like physical health. I just found myself uh, being a little, feeling a little sluggish <laughs> uh, a lot of the days. So now I'm working, making the point to work out in the mornings. Um, so I put that in my calendar. Uh, I make sure that I you know, put like 6 a.m. to 8 a.m workout my calendar uh, my phone um, but I, I mean I find that managing my time is not as difficult uh, once I have it written out and planned out for myself so I know what I'm doing uh, for the next week or the next month or so yeah that's a good strategy um, I have a work calendar obviously um, and I stick to that religiously, obviously. So I think getting that, like, getting a calendar for everyday things not included work is the obvious next step. For sure. Yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, writing anything down that you need <laughs> to remind yourself is going to be helpful, uh, whatever you need to do in your daily life, uh, whether that's work or whether that's personal things. I think you need to, or at least for me, I find myself not remembering everything. So and I don't expect anybody else to kind of remember everything either. So yeah, I think that being able to, to track what you want to do, what plans you want to have, um, can definitely be beneficial in, uh, in managing your time. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what, uh, I guess what photography equipment do you usually bring to a show? Uh, and what equipment would you recommend for people starting out either just as beginner cameras or starting out low budget financially? Yeah, for sure. So I actually, I'll show you my bag. I have a very small like book bag that carries uh, three different lenses that I carry in my camera. Um, so it's actually open already, but uh, this is the size of my bag. See, it's the size of my shoulders, basically, uh, <laughs> for scale. Uh, I have I have a, my 70 to 200 millimeter lens in the back of there. Um, I have a 50 mil in there, and I also have a, um, a 
I just got a 14 to 24 millimeter camera um, lens. Um, I also carry a lot of batteries uh, because you never know uh, if you charged your batteries or not. You, you, sometimes you forget, uh, but uh, thankfully you'll have some spares. So I carry a lot of batteries. Um, I have a few uh, cards, memory cards, just in case if I run out, but I usually never do it. I don't take a lot of pictures because I kind of know what shots I want to get. Um, I have... What else I have? I have my stickers in here. I have some stickers. Um, I have my earplugs. I always keep earplugs because you never know if you uh, end up in a space where it's just super loud um, and you need to, you know, cover your ears and have some protection. I always definitely recommend bringing those. Um, I kind of regret. <laughs> um, I've, I've gone to a lot of shows since I was 15, house shows, and did not bring any earplugs, and I, I have really bad hearing now. <laughs> um, then I have a pen, permanent marker, just like random stuff like that. Uh, just in case if I need to write anything. Oh, and I just dropped my lenses, so. <laughs> Uh-oh. I'll clean that up later. <laughs> um. But yeah, that's what I. No, y'all was just gonna say I I, I carry uh, I go on very light with what I bring into the into a concert. So um, you kind of just talked about something. You said you kind of like know what shots you want uh, before you go to the show. What kind of goes through your mind when you're thinking about that? So just particularly being located in Akron and. Uh, going to a lot of Cleveland shows, I already kind of, there's some, I think I know, I've been to most venues, but um, there's some venues that have the best lighting as possible, and there's some venues that have the kind of marquee artists that come to their shows, so I'm already familiar with the space and um, how to navigate the space and things like that. So um, just taking multiple photos in those spaces, I think just knowing the angles, uh, knowing the different perspectives I can get, um, knowing the lighting, uh, and then knowing also uh, people that are on the soundboard that are controlling the lights, um, all those different variables, uh, bringing that into uh, how I go about proceeding with the shot uh, is definitely, I don't even know where I was going, but <laughs> I use all those variables in knowing what kind of settings I need to adjust on my camera uh, to be able to get the perfect shot or the, the best shot as possible. Okay, um, gotcha. So kind of, it kind yeah, of hopefully. comes with experience. Yeah, pretty much. But um, yeah, hopefully, I don't know if there's, I think I probably missed something in that question. But was it, were you looking more of like, I guess, a technical aspect of how I get my shots? Um, no, uh, no, I just kind of meant like what your, your thought process is when you're going into a concert, like what your, what kind of shots you're trying to get. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I hope to get like the best I really love artists that are really animated and have <laughs> um, great facial expressions. I mostly do like basically headshots. Uh, I mostly get torso up shots uh, whenever I'm shooting an artist because I think that's more uh, people, or at least I personally um, like to see like the different facial expressions that come out of an artist and the passion that you see with an artist whenever they're performing. Um, so I like to capture those kind of moments. That's probably actually that's <laughs> that's a better answer <laughs> for for that. That's that's how I approach my photography is getting the best uh, expression out of the artist, the most pure expression out of the artist. That's that's how I approach my shots. Okay, yeah, I think that that's kind of one of the reasons I want to do it is because I want to like I want to capture with the artist is feeling and I want to like I want to capture the connection they get with the fans too 
Absolutely. Yeah, and if uh, yeah, if you could definitely get some uh, crowd shots in, uh, I think that's also great too because it shows that you know the crowd's having a good time and you know having an artist being able to have that in their uh, kind of back pocket to show like, hey, all these fans are having a good time. Uh, you should come out to our next show. I mean, it's, it help. It's it's very helpful to get those shots in too. Uh, I think that's all the questions I had. I think I ran out of the questions. Okay, yeah. Yeah, thank you again for, you know, hopping on the call. Um, if you ever, you know, have any other questions, you most definitely feel free to shoot me a text, give me a phone call. Uh, I'm always, well, not always available, but I'm available for the most part, and I'm pretty timely <laughs> with responding back. So, uh, yeah, thank you for hopping on this uh, video call. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Um, great to learn from you. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, I'll start kind of shooting my own uh, shoot my own concert soon. Um, but yeah, that was really helpful. Do you have um, a website that people can go to, or you have a social media account that people can follow? Yeah, so I have a website kind of for all of my uh, like photography and graphic art and blog. I'm going to have a strictly photography site soon, uh, but for the time being. Um, so my site is Kaufman, so just my last name, uh, and then create.site123.me. Um, so I can message that one to you because it's probably pretty long. Um, okay. And then my Instagram is just Jake L. Kaufman. Do you, are you going to have, are you going to shoot under your name or are you going to shoot under a different name? Okay. No, I'll just shoot under my name. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I've also, actually, that probably, going into that, um, I guess how I was able to get the ball rolling, or at least the ball rolling faster than most people, was having this company name, um, the Jam Company, uh, and not shooting under Jamal Lawson Photography. That's a lot helpful uh, in terms of getting photo passes because a lot of the times actually uh, you do need to get uh, a media outlet to basically request the photo pass for you uh, so it's, it's a lot harder if you're shooting under your name um, to get photo passes so I'll definitely be mindful of that um, I don't know if you're interested in, in starting you can definitely start like a, a media firm or like a social media firm or a marketing firm if you want to supplement photography and uh, your passion for marketing. You can most definitely do that. Call it something else. Call it, I don't know, Blender, Pix, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Um, but I, that's a lot more helpful to have like a company name. Uh, I don't know why, but um, a lot of the venues or a lot of the bands or um, usually like the press team of the band or the, the media team, whoever is managing that band, likes to get uh, more of a media outlet rather than a single photographer shooting for them or shooting in, or shooting in their venue. Yeah, I, sh I definitely actually should think about that. I should make a uh, make a more company name. Yeah, and then also, I mean, you could still, uh, you know, once you get, I guess, a little bit later in the life of uh, shooting photography, um, and then also doing marketing for other people, uh, you can also register your business underneath, you know, that company name. Uh, within whatever state that you're in. Um, I have my um, company name registered in the state of Ohio as an LLC. So whenever you get to that point, um, you can most definitely do that. I, I think this it's not really a hard process, or at least within the state of Ohio. It's a really simple process to register as a LLC. You just you know, basically have to have at least one year of history of having some kind of transactions, whether that's uh, you're either generating revenue or you're um, uh, sharing the expenses that you, you've uh, 
you've been uh, having to spend money on things uh, for your business. Got it. Okay. That's, awesome. Uh, yeah, definitely something to think about on the line too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you again. Um, you have any other questions before we get off? I think that was it. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you again, Jake, and uh, keep jamming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Jam.